Hello to those who chose Pow One. Let's help you find out what surprises are coming your way. You got two songs. You got Big Fish by Vince Staple. Then you got the lyrics to Chun Li by Nicki Minaj. With the Big Fish, I'm getting that you have three different surprises coming your way. There's just something about you being like top quality, you know, like a prime rib. You know how they grade different meats? Like, you would be grade A. I think grade A is a good grade, right? <laughs> I was just guessing. Just something about you just reeks of quality. Like, everything you touch turns into a success. Specifically in your career, you have already seen accolades or you've already achieved massive success. It's not stopping for you. You know, you're going to continue upgrading. If you're a manager right now, you're going to push to upgrade to a bigger position than a bigger position. You know, I don't see you stopping to climb the ladder, but it's because you're good at what you do and you're really good at, I guess you could say playing the system or finessing the system, but it's you just using your connections very, very wisely. You're very smart. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was it with these songs. So now we're going to get into what are the surprises. With the Night of Cups, I'm getting the song by Beyonce where she's like, it's, it feels so good to be alive. I think it's called Be Alive. Okay, so two of these surprises you haven't seen come true. And one of these surprises are either going to come true like very soon, like within the next hour, within the next few days. The first one that's going to come true first is the one dealing with a message from someone, but this doesn't have to do with career. If you have a long lost sister, a long lost brother, or you've just fallen out of contact with any of your siblings or someone you see as a sibling. So it could very well be a best friend that you just see as like a brother or a sister. They're going to be reaching out, contacting you. But I more of see it as like, they're going to be contacting someone else. And then you end up meeting up with them to see them and see how they're doing. If you don't resonate with that scenario, this is just a long lost connection. You used to be friends with them, let's say in high school or middle school. You used to know them a very long time ago and then you lost contact with them. You're going to be reuniting with them like in a gathering. With the two cups there, I think both of y'all are in very similar career fields or y'all have very, very similar goals. I don't know if this is how you see yourself, but Whenever they're going to be meeting you, they think they have to impart some knowledge on you, boost your confidence, or reassure you, because you look, like, disappointed in yourself when looking at, like, you know, whenever you look at people and they're a reflection of something, they reflect to you disappointment in yourself. You end up getting mad at yourself, but in a way, it's because you don't feel like you measure up to their expectations. They see that through your body language and they're going to try to reassure you. But at the end of the day, those thoughts that you think that they think towards you is just projection because they genuinely just love seeing you. Like they just want to see how you're doing. They hope the best for you and they're honestly not wishing any ill intent. Just any malicious thoughts, they not even crossing their mind at all. And they want to put you at ease, but I think by the time this conversation ends or this interaction ends, I don't think it's going to put you at ease and they see that. So it's kind of ending in like a disappointment, but I'm not surprised in the, in the far future y'all in like years from now or something, weeks from now, y'all end up meeting again, somehow having to fix this because this feels like karm, karma unfulfilled, lesson unfulfilled that you both have to learn whenever it comes to compromising with y'all's personalities, y'all's mindsets towards y'all's endeavors. I don't know if this person has done something in the past to make you feel this way. The magician is showing me that you're working very, very hard, like fiscally. You want abundant things. Abundance does not come without hard work. And you definitely understand that because you are putting in the hard work. So with that in mind, especially with it being next to the Knight of Cups, I'm not surprised if you're sacrificing your social life or your romantic life to be able to focus on your career right now. You're definitely giving off masculine energy. Don't be offended if you usually resonate with being the feminine energy because 
right now you're just in a masculine energy. Like there's nothing wrong. There's a yin and a yang in everyone, you know? So what surprise is coming your way that I don't think you see coming and I don't think you want to see these other two surprises coming, to be honest, because over here, this is the Eight of Swords. And this actually not, oh, match up with the, with the Nine of Swords. Okay, Spirit is seeing you as, they're very proud of you for even working hard. Your go-getter personality and mindset is totally blocking you to tap into your body and your emotional self so you don't do emotional checks on yourself or you don't check in with your body often. In the near or far future, you're going to realize that you need a vacation. You need a break because you're burnt out. I don't know how you're going to figure this out, but Spirit's letting you know that to you, you're seeing it as you need to work very hard and you all, you have been working very hard, probably for like months, even possibly years. You don't realize that there's a more efficient and smarter approach to go about your career and gaining money than the way you've been doing it now. I remember one example I gave in a pick a card was that the person was working and working and working. I was seeing there, they were like a workhorse, but spirit was letting them know that they see it as they will get insulted if someone or spirit were to tell them that they're doing stuff the wrong way. Cause it's like, what do you mean? This is what spirit's telling you, but you, you should hire assistants. You should hire receptionists. You take on too much, too much to where you can't enjoy life for what it is. Do you want to be on your deathbed realizing that you were only able to fully live your life in the last like two months of your life, the last six months of your life? Do you want to be like that? You want to know something else this also reminds me of? There's this show called Station called Ugh, I cannot talk. Shameless. I forgot what the father's name is, but it's the father, right? And he's just an alcoholic. Honestly, he's very absent from their lives. He's just in and out. There's a scene, I think, in the first season or the second one where he ends up getting into a very short-term relationship with this nurse. And she she's like a gorgeous woman, but she found out that she was diagnosed with cancer and she only had like a month to live, I think. So she decided to just F everything because she, she realized that she didn't even want to be a nurse. Like she didn't even want to be in the medical field. She was just doing what was satisfying her family. So she just straight up just, I think, ghosted all of them went on a very, very whirlwind romance with that father. And I think there was a point where she almost killed him on the train because she wanted to make love, you know, on the train tracks. And then the, and then the train was coming and she was and she was like, I'm about to come. But then the train was coming. <laughs> uh, but anyway, she did end up passing away, which is, which is sad. My point is like, do you want to end up like her? Like you want to live your life authentically for your true self. So with that in mind, where are your priorities at? Are you doing this fiscal stuff for you or is it for others? Because I think you need to reevaluate that. I think it should really be for yourself, earning money for with, with what you love to do. This is what kind of sucks though, because you could have kids or you could have people who fiscally rely on you. All I'm going to say is I'm giving you this advice for a reason, okay? And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, so especially with the Eight of Swords, this does look very, very difficult. For you to even realize that you're burnt out and that's why things are being difficult in general for you to manifest stuff financially, for you to barely keep up living probably paycheck to paycheck. But I'm really getting someone who is well off, but you want even more success. You want even because you want to achieve a certain title, but it's like, do you want to achieve it for yourself or is it because you want recognition from others? So yeah, that's a surprise coming. And then the next surprise, which I think just kind of basically links to this, is that once you take the vacation to yourself or time off to yourself with the Eight of Wands, you're there alone. I think you're completely isolating yourself from others and really self-reflecting because at this point, I don't even think you think right now that you need this. With the Nine of Pentacles, that's you coming even closer to God, to Source, whatever you believe in. And having certain epiphanies about your personality type and how your brain works. This is like whenever this stuff happens. It's, it's going to be in the far future or the near future, to be honest. Once you realize these certain epiphanies about yourself, how, how you work, what best works for you, you're going to come back to your job with the, with the magician. This is the magician card. With the magician again, 
having an easier approach towards life and a much more efficient strategy on how to execute certain things and keeping your well-being in mind. I think the only advice they would like to give you whenever the surprise comes where you end up permitting is to not blame yourself for not seeing this earlier and just have a lot of forgiveness for yourself and compassion. Because you seem like a very like workhorse type of person, a very effective person. You are smart. I told you before you're smart. So I think you like to take the smartest approach in life in general. And then you're now realizing like, I've just been doing all the approaches by the book instead of thinking what intuitively works for me. Just have forgiveness and compassion for yourself for realizing it now. Better now than ever, okay? So now these next three cards are going to let you know spirits on advice on how to best deal with these surprises and to yield like the highest vibrational outcome. So on the top, you got the five of cups. In the middle, you have the temperance card. On the bottom, you have the four in reverse. You can only take this advice once you reach the Nine of Pentacles stage and you start having these epiphanies about how your mind works, what best approach to take whenever it comes to your career, how to have a balanced lifestyle. And with the full in reverse, basically they're just re reaffirming, I think you're already going to do this, to slow down. I feel like that's the antithesis of what the magician was definitely giving me. And it's funny because the full is the original first card. Yeah, like the magician, it has the number one on it, but the fool is like the zero. So this is you showing a true expertise. Let's say everyone does it by the book and that's okay. That's why certain rules and regulations are set. So that way people can be safe and practice safely. But for you, you have such an expertise in your field that you can do things so eclectically and it just works every single time. It produces amazing results and it's faster and it's better, but it, it's only because it works only for you. No one else can replicate it. An example I'm going to give you is <laughs> there's this person I knew who recently got a haircut and she, she has straight hair. So she was telling me how she went to, did not schedule an appointment. She was just a walk-in. So this girl sat her down and was like, what exactly do you want? So she showed her a picture of what she wanted and she, of how she wanted the hairstyle to be. And it just took that girl like 10 minutes to cut her hair. Just brushed it. She spread a little bit. She brushed it again. She had her in all sorts of angles, like angling her head and was just chopping things off. Like boom, like big chops. And the person was telling me like they were terrified the whole time. Because they were like, this girl does not know what she's doing because usually they measure it, they take their time with it. But by the time the end product, it was even better than what the picture was apparently. And like, the girl was like, yeah, I knew that you were going to like this. It was just just like a little spice come compared to what the, the picture was, but like the person really liked it. So yeah, it's like something like that <laughs> where you're going to cut a lot of time. And you're going to have more free time to for yourself to be able to live a balanced lifestyle. To not ever again experience this burnout with the Eight of Swords that was showing up before. With the Five of Cups, it is showing you like you're going to learn how to self-rejuvenate in a sense. Because before, all these cups would have spilled and you would have realized by the time the last cup was dropped. And then that's like the huge, massive, you know, mess. But now you're learning how to pick up after your mess, as in like take care of your own well-being whenever, whenever you're working out your body too hard, whenever you're too mentally exhausted and you're doing that for days, you're not sleeping correctly, you know, just making tweaks to your adjustments to your schedule. And with a temperance card, this is all in divine timing. I don't think you're like in your 60s or 70s because this is you maybe even in your, at the earliest 30s, 40s, 50s where you have to start realizing that you're not young anymore. You know, you can't go at things the way you used to whenever you're younger, your body has changed. So therefore you have to adjust your schedule and your regimen around that. And also now your mindset towards your career specifically. Also had to perfectly balance your life. And But this is all within divine timing. That's why, especially to do not get frustrated that you're just realizing this a little too late in your, in your mind, okay? Because you're not. Nothing is ever too late. There are success stories where people have achieved greatness, have achieved the goals that they've wanted 
later on in life, like in their 50s, 60s, y'all, anything is possible. So yeah, keep it up, Pile One. This was an amazing reading. I hope you don't take it the wrong way. I'm just looking out for you, so spirit, okay? I just, I don't think that you like that I'm telling you about the surprise. The surprise is. <laughs> okay, so please like, just like, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys have a great day or night. Bye. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Hello to those who've chosen Pile Two. Up here you have the Knight of Cups. I don't know if you can see this. This is the Six of Swords and the Tower is down here on the bottom. I got four songs for y'all. So the only upright one was Duckworth by Kendrick Lamar. Then all these songs in reverse you got Tate by Brockhampton, Young God by Russ, and Malibu by PH1. I'm going to preface this. I, I don't enjoy having these kind of interpretations. I I wish I could say anything else but this. You know, I don't I hope something else comes out. So I'm getting the whole vibe from all the songs that there is someone who is going to be passing away soon. I just, I don't like giving those. I don't like giving that interpretation. I don't like it because I don't know. There's a reason why I'm clicking on this. That's a surprise. It's not even that you're going to contact a past loved one or a past loved one's going to give you a sign. No, like this is someone that you know in this physical reality is going to pass on. A way this could manifest is either what we both will be thinking, right? Like, is someone that you love dearly is going to pass away? Or let's say like you were a huge mega fan of a celebrity or of a certain public figure and they end up passing away because it hurts you the same way you would feel with someone that you actually love. Could be an animal that you've had for a few years. I just think that with this person goes you're going to have many regrets on how you handled this connection or you wish this connection could have went a different direction honestly i'm getting the vibes of that conversation you could have with this person could have been an argument or something where just you didn't believe them or you doubted them and then it's just the dichotomy of like heaven and hell the concept of it like why do certain people get chosen to pass away you know how there's people where you just feel like they just they didn't deserve to go out like that or they were such a good person like what do you mean their lesson was over in this life what do you mean they had nothing else to contribute so that's why they're they had to pass on it's you really revisiting that concept but seeing it through like a really painful lens because you can't help it, but like your bias is affecting towards this person is affecting how uh, you're viewing your connection to source or it's just simply the concept of why do certain people have to pass away? Why did this person have to leave? Because I feel like you're saying as you didn't, this person did not deserve it. This person had a lot more to fight for. You feel like this person had so much to offer and give to the world. And that they just left this world too soon. But in your mind, it's like the concept. Everything happens for a reason. So why did this happen? Like, why? Like, this is you screaming out to God. Like, why, God? Like, why this person? Okay, yeah. That's... I don't want to get... I feel bad. Okay, guys. Let's get started. And just... It's an insult to call this a surprise coming your way, right? It's freaking death. Like, that's just depressing. I'm sorry. You have to go through this. A surprise. So, when this person passes on or you get news of it, you're going to be surprised how you deal with the news of their loss or the way you cope with the loss. I think it's a very new thing. Like, Especially if you have previous experiences of people close to you passing away, you're dealing with it very, very differently compared to how you usually deal with it. And I don't know if this is for good or for worse with the Knight of Cups, but I think other people are polarized and surprised on how you're dealing with it. Maybe you're more stoic than usual. Maybe you're just yelling things or saying stuff 
that to others may seem like you're being dramatic, but because this is er other people, everyone else having an opinion on how you're coping with it. And it's just, this is new. Um, Honestly, whatever you're going to be doing to cope with this, it's going to work. And what I mean by that is with the Six of Swords there, that's like when the ceremony begins occurring. Uh, at least is how it works in America. There's like usually like like a wake where for two, three days they have the body out and people come. Like a rosary, there you go, rosary. And then they have the actual funeral on the days after. And I think by the time that funeral session is over, you won't ever forget this person and the mark they've made on this world and on you and the memories that you've had, but you'll be able to like forget and let go like the pain. And I think that's something new. I think that's a surprise that I'm trying to make the best of it. Sorry, this is not funny. I'm just like nervous because it's showing you deaths is, inevi is inevitable for anyone around you. Now you're learning how to better deal with it. If you have never dealt with a death before like this, you're surprised how well you're handling yourself after the whole funeral process because you thought you would be more damaged, more emotional. I think you're going to be surprised how rational you are, but you're being rational not because you're trying to block off your emotions. You don't want to cope with this. No, it's because you would have already processed it with this Knight of Cups, what, however you, you coped with it. And then with the tower at the bottom, this is you to be like, you know, if there is an afterlife or something, I hope I get to see this person. <laughs> when I pass on, I hope they get to hug up or how they're doing. <laughs> but like, I'll cry, but... But it's because it's really beautiful, like, the way you're coping and processing it, because you're just really strong. Because with the dinosaurs and the, the Ten of Pentacles, um, if they have, like, a grave, that's you visiting it often and putting, like, fresh flowers or their favorite food, and that's you often showing your, your love towards them. Or respecting them, cleaning up their grave, or if you have their ashes, like once in a while you take their ashes and you just sit down at the lake that y'all used to play at when y'all were little, and you just look out on the bench and they're just on your lap, you know stuff like that where you're just commemorating them. And but with the Ten of Pentacles, this is like you often think about them throughout the years, and keep them in mind. You show your respect and love and admiration for them. And you just really hope that whenever you pass on that you can at least see them. Or if you don't believe in like heaven or hell. Some people describe as their, their last moments in life. That from chronological order they remember probably basically everything about their life. Like from, from, from the start when they were a child to when they got older to the last memory that they've had. That's you really looking forward to seeing those memories replay oh, with this person. So yeah, I hope they can rest in peace, you know, but I got one more card and this is supposed to let you know about how to best like deal with this to surprise in the most highest vibrational outcome. Like if you ever needed advice. Uh, from spirit about it. Each time you reach out to this person or do things to commemorate this person, they're with you. And they're always thankful. They're going to be always thankful for the blessings that you give them to commemorate them. I guess just to give you peace and comfort. Honestly, if y'all did things on bad terms or things were tumultuous between y'all, I don't see any type of, they don't hold any type of animosity towards you. They're just so grateful that you're alive and they just hope that you can serve whatever function you're meant to serve in your life to the most happiest and content outcome like you, you can as possible. Does that make sense? You don't have to veer off your path too many times, you know? 
they just hope you're resilient. Getting specifically that. It feels kind of cold. Like, not that they, they didn't love you or something. Like, not at all. They feel like you can handle all the weight of the world on your shoulders. You know, the there's this Chalupa game in Mexican culture. And there's El Mundo. And he's holding the world on his shoulders. They think you're so strong and capable to do that. They think you're you're capable of so many great things. Let's say if you've done bad things in the past or if you've had atrocities, like those don't define you. You're very resilient. You deserve to live a blessed life. If y'all were from like a bad community, like you deserve to get out of that bad community. You deserve to help others in that bad community too. I don't know, I, I think they just want you to live a balanced, healthy, and blessed life. That's all they wish for, like, they wish nothing but the best for you. Like, be a kind and loving person. I think that's the only thing they would say. Because now, look, at, I stopped crying. <laughs> it's it's not that, I think this person might have just been emotionally cold in general, not just towards you. So I think that's why they're going at this very analytical so I hope that I was able to bring some closure to you. Like if this does happen, you can go back to this card or this, this pile. My words can give you comfort and help you on your healing journey. Hey, so please like this slide. Don't comment. This is like really, I, I just, I wish the best for you. Uh, Paul too. And I'm so sorry I had to go through this. Please like this like, comment, subscribe. Oh, no, don't comment. Sorry. Subscribe. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great day or night. Bye. Hello to those who chose in pile three. We all got a lot that came out. I'll put them all into frame eventually. I'm going to start off with the two songs y'all got. Y'all got Potato Salad in Reverse by Asap Rocky and Tyler, the creator. And then you got the lyrics to Rusty by Tyler, the creator. This has nothing to do with your surprise. This is prefacing your personality before I go into it. And probably because I need to give you some advice whenever it comes to dealing with this surprise or these surprises. I have a feeling it's just one big massive surprise. You feel like a very loud, blunt person, especially to others. You come off the complete opposite of kind and cutesy and adorable. To seem very tough. If anything, you probably have a mad face. <laughs> probably you're not very approachable. These things are how you come off to other people. It's not showing me who you are on the inside. Oh, you see the lyrics to Rusty. It's, I was drama kid. I'd run with the fun dip. My nuts itched. That was the fine. I always said fuck <laughs> Hated the popular ones. Now I'm the popular one. Also hated the... Homes too, still I start copying these sounds. See, I don't bees in the trap, I bees in the bees. This is the era of Tyler Creator when he was fucking shit up and his reputation really blew up from that. Because it was during a time on the internet when like theatrics and dramatic personalities were the ones that became popular and he just played into that. And he's not completely different now, but he his personality, I think, is showing more of his softer kinder the inside his vulnerable side is now shown in his public image so he's different from this now you just feel like a polarizing mess to the outside world or to these things that are going to surprise you i feel like this is a love reading to be honest whoever's going to surprise you they're scared of you <laughs> they think they think you won't like them they think that they won't fit in with you because they can't keep up with your pace they can't keep up with your conversation they think if anything you're just very enigmatic they don't understand why you say the things you do you're like you're, like, you're so random like i can understand where tyler the creator comes from at a point because in the interviews that he's in here we are i'll just I'll just put this there He's a really, really funny person, but he's so random. And I just feel like for some people, they just cannot handle that because they are very into societal norms or societal expectations, societally approved conversations. Imagine you talking to Tyler the Crater and then you have someone else here who was just like that. Like they're going to be very silent and like scared of Tyler, but it's because he's so outspoken. He thinks so differently. He's such a unique person. He's such a genius at what he does in his craft. And it's very intimidating to people who don't know themselves. So that's my point. I think you might be... 
dealing with a group of people or a person who are going to surprise you, who see you in this way, it's because of insecurities that they see you this way. Because I feel like people who are on your level, you know, people who can't think randomly like you, who it's the creative potency. People who are high in creative potency love your energy. They love to be around you. They're reinvigorated whenever they're around you. Just people who are not on that vibration cannot handle it. And they find it too tiring. So surprise that's coming. The thing is, is this really a surprise bitch? Because with the Tower and the Ace of Cups, that's you now being on the market for like dating. If it's to find new friends, then it's to find new friends. But I have a feeling this is about love. I will do both interpretations. Okay, now I'm going to be whispering now, y'all. Because apparently I was told that I was being a little too loud. So. Love is an equal give and take. That's what a relationship is in general. And you want to experience this because they're not, this is just love. This is not friendship because there's only, only so much love that your friends and that your family acquaintances can provide. You're just like, I'm healed and I'm ready to love. And I think you've been off the market for quite a bit, a few months, could even be up to a year. And with the Nine of Swords there on the side. Oh, you don't see it. This is the Ace of Cups and this is the Blasted Tower. Sorry, I don't think you can see it. Um, okay, so now it goes to the Nine of Swords, which is here. And then you're just like, I'm back on the market, baby. Like, let's just do it. You really excited to see potential love options. I think especially with the being next to the tower, you're just sick and tired of being stuck and stagnant and healing, hermiting. This is your time to be extrovert. This is your time to throw yourself out there. This is you taking action, like actually asking for people's numbers. You're the one that's initiating conversations. You're just being bold and honest. And I was getting before, like, that's your energy. But the surprise when it comes to your love life, y'all, is with the Knight of Cups and with the Six of Swords in reverse is that you're going to have people seeking you out. And one of them is going to be the cup that you deserve the most that best aligns with you right now and your vibration. With the nine of swords there, you're thinking, I have to take all this action. I have to do it. You're just going to be attracting people left and right. And I'm surprised if some of your quote unquote friends are the ones that end up trying to open up an opportunity with you in love. And then with the two of wands there, I'm getting that song called Grey Love by Kahu. Who the artist is he called it gray love but we all know it was about gay love and my point is this is you definitely exploring like the same sex options or you seeing really like the potential candidate to be your next lover is the same sex so i don't know if this is a surprise but with the sun as you're on the market you're exploring your options with the five of swords i guess another surprise right is past option is going to come back or a past love nice person this is your ex that tries to come back and snatch you off the market but i'm not gonna lie this person feels like they're more aligned to your destiny and your life's journey it's a matter of when you're both ready for it but with the five of swords i don't think you're ready to go out with this person or be emotionally available for this person in a relationship. And that's why I think you're seeking out the same sex option. So I'm not surprised if this person ends up being the opposite sex. Like if you're bi, if you're just gay. I mean, then it's just, you know, one of your exes. And that's you rejecting them and their cup of love. And you going towards whoever the same sex option is. Or let's say you usually date feminine people. Like if you're straight, if you usually date feminine people, this is a very masculine person. Or you usually date masculine people, this is a very feminine person. Like it's just polarizing to society and your typical options that society views. But with the Ten of Pentacles, honestly, this feels like a very happy and a blessed connection. The issue I'm seeing is how long is this going to be happy and blessed though? Because even though the Ten of Ten Pentacles coming out, maybe it'll be fine for like a few months. Maybe even a year at a and a half at the most. But with the Five of Swords, that's aligning with your life, truth, and destiny with whoever that ex was. And I don't think you're going to like to hear that. Could very well be an Aquarius or I think I think that's the Mercury. I never mind. I'm not going to say anything because I, I don't know what sign that is. But 
I think your life partner is one of your exes, but I think it's specifically that ex that came up and tried to start things up again with you. I pulled out four cards for you for spirit advice on how to handle the surprise or surprises to yield the most highest vibrational outcome for you. Y'all got great cards. Y'all got the Two of Cups up there. The Empress, the Strength on the bottom, and the Knight of Swords next to the Empress. And the song I was channeling was Montero by Little Nas X. How to handle the surprise so you could yield the highest vibrational outcome. So with the Two of Cups there, you need to be self-aware and very cognizant that the five of swords person I was talking about, you are going to unconsciously be having dreams about them, randomly thinking about them. I don't think you're like actively stalking their social media or actively seeing where they're at. I think you can't help but think of them. Because with the two of cups there, I'm more of seeing it as like polygamy. So I was like, oh, maybe specific property isn't polygamy, but no, it's just the person you're going to be in relationship with is unaware that this five of swords person is rooted towards you maybe y'all have a marriage contract like in the spiritual realm i think that you want to throw this under the bus and keep it there under the bus for years hopefully find other people because you want to be with everyone but the five of swords person but I'm just letting you know that in a sense, a toxic mentality, you at least have to acknowledge that you can't help but think about this five of swords person. And it's okay. You're just growing, you're living, you're learning. And I don't see you actively like looking up their social media or stalking them. Or I'm not even surprised if you don't even follow them on anything on social media or if you block their number or something. But I'm just letting you know there still has to be stuff played out with the five of swords. But that seems more like... They're meant to be like your marriage partner material, to be honest. But I don't think you're going to like hearing that. But just be self-aware. And with the Empress and the Knight of Swords, life's going to play out in the future once you learn all of the lessons you can learn from partnerships, specifically whatever financial abundance, let's say you're actually financially stable and you're ready to be open toward motherhood or to this connection with the five of swords person life is going to naturally align you to this person even if y'all traveled to different countries even if y'all have never been in contact for years it's going to play out to where it perfectly aligns where you both meet and y'all just pop it off but with the strength card spirit is very happy that you're finding love in general you know with whoever you're going to find love with there with the ten of pentacles Whoever the same sex person was or whoever this very different person was, they just hope you navigate it properly, productively, and non-toxically. And one big issue with you that could end up affecting the relationship later on is if you don't acknowledge it now, that it's okay to forgive yourself to think about this Five of Swords person. I don't see you obsessing over them. It's just you can't help it. But it's because y'all are karmically aligned to, I think, like, be married, go through with a marriage contract. And I'm getting specifically with a strength card. One last message is you're going to have bouts of ruminating over whoever this Knight of Swords person is. And it's going to leave you very distressed. So that's why they're saying don't handle this toxically or non-productively because you, whenever you're going to have these bouts of rumination you're going to want to isolate yourself because you think it's wrong of you to think of this person or you don't want to tell the other person that you're thinking of them but spirit's actually telling you that honesty is the best policy so you need to be honest and forthright from the beginning y'all that you want better options but sometimes right now you can't help but think of the knight of swords but honestly, I don't feel like you're going to do these things, but this is spirit's advice. So let's not be toxic out there. Pod 3, please like, dislike, home, subscribe. Good luck in your dating life. Bye. 
Hello to those who chose in part four. This is going to be what surprise or surprises are coming your way. And over here is going to let you know spirits on advice on how to best deal with these surprises, which I feel like I'm going to end up turning it around in the middle of the reading. Anyways, the song lyrics you got was I think Working Out by J.I.D. Here, let me. Okay, so I guess. I'm going to just start from top to bottom. I'm actually getting to turn around the advice card on how to best deal with these surprises right now. And I think it aligns with the King of Pentacles and it's the Five of Swords. With the Five of Swords, your advice is to stay out of conflict Stay out of putting your opinions or any type of influence on something, which I think will make a lot more sense once I start interpreting. You also, I don't know if you see, you got the Emperor and the Empress. But the King of Pentacles, I'm channeling that you're not supposed to see the surprise, the surprises coming. I'm not supposed to tell you what they are, but I can insinuate things suggest possible outcomes which i know to you is like well then what's the point of coming to this reading i think there's a reason why all these cards came out you know but with the king of pentacles ironically you're not going to get a straightforward concrete answer because you're not supposed to know and with the five of swords there if anything because that's how to best deal with these surprises if you knew right now, you would balls to the walls, go straight into it and start influencing your energy into it. And that's the last thing you need to freaking do. So with that in mind, I don't think spirit thinks that you have the maturity to hold yourself back from your impulses. This could possibly have to do with a relationship with the emperor and the emperor's coming up. So basically, this is how the, the, your reading's gonna go. I'm going to give you a story about two different people or about a person and I'm going to tell you this person is going to go through this and this and it's very sad you know they must feel so sad about that but it's okay because this and this is going to happen this is a roundaway about way of me telling you about your surprise but it's not going to have the specific details that I usually add into my readings this is very very interesting but wait there's more even though that is the downside to that King of Pentacles interpretation I did give, the upside to it is you are truly divinely guided. Spirit is so proud of your spiritual growth and where you're at. And even though you are immature to handle this particular topic or whatever the surprises are going to arise, overall, they do see you as a mature, capable adult. You're on your path. You're really good at being emotionally stable and being stable for others. I see you as maybe even currently, you're kind of focusing on interpersonal connections, how you can tweak the way that you confront other people, other issues, the way your words come across. Am I being too kind? Am I being too lenient? Or am I being too harsh and too stubborn? I'm not going to see negative qualities to your personality because they can be a positive. You can see a positive thing about you, but then that same quality someone else sees only the negative. And you're just trying your best to accommodate to others. This is a time of self-reflection and being selfless. So yeah, I think you're just mainly making tweaks to your personalities and to your social image. Maybe this will also help you in the process because King of Pentacles, that's like a slow moving process. It's going to take months, which makes sense because months or even years because I myself have literally tweaked my entire personality before and it took me a good seven years. That's a long fucking time, but you can do it. I see with King of Pentacles that you have, you have the tenacity and the drive to continue forward. Okay, so let's begin over here with you're waiting. I'm going to start with the Emperor. With the Eight of Cups, I'm channeling that your Sun, Moon, and Rising sign 
is in a water sign and something about a Jupiter placement. Wow, Pal 4, so weird you clicked on this reading. It's just giving me a story about a person, you know, I definitely has nothing to do with you. This person named Jane, let's call him Jane. Yeah, so Jane definitely ascended water, I mean, is in water, whatever other major planets are in water, and I was also getting Jupiter for Jane. Anyway, so Jane is really crafty and witty, super intelligent. I'm also getting the image of a bartender, so maybe they're a bartender, but it could be analogous to someone who is super flowist in their personality and with their physical interactions with other people. So this is someone who's definitely like a social chameleon can can get along with everybody who has a little bit of everything in their skill sets. So that's why they can be a, such an amazing social chameleon. But I was getting specifically with something with technology. Maybe Jane is in a career with technology. Or it could be maybe Jane's a social media star. I'm sure you can make inferences to um, this particular Jane's career focus whenever it comes to the internet. And even though Jane represents such a really likable image to society, even they themselves, I'm sure Jane loves themselves. But with the song lyrics, I'm getting that there is a huge dissatisfaction with where they are at in their life. They feel like they're not worthy enough to advance in their career. They can't help but feel like whenever they get into relationships, friendship, or even romantic, I don't know which one specifically will resonate for Jane, but they feel like it always goes to shit. But they don't blame it on themselves. It's like, why is the universe not sending me fiscal opportunities and people in my life who are going to stay stable, who are going to be consistent with the Eight of Cups? I think that Jane is just asking for the bare minimum. With that in mind, I don't think Jane realizes that with her social mask that she puts on, that she attracts everybody. That's why Jane is working on her personality and making tweaks to it. Because I think Jane just wants to be a better person, but I'm letting Jane know that you, Jane, sorry, not you, is feeling guided to do this because of this chronic dissatisfaction she has with her life. And that she feels as if it's a huge overbearing thing to take control over. I'm so sorry if I'm scatterbrained. I'm so, so sorry. Basically, it's like, if you find yourself spewing a narrative that everyone else is the problem but you're not that's when you know that you're the problem and this is how jane has maybe recently been viewing life as in i'm so dissatisfied with my life but what am i doing to contribute to this dissatisfaction what can i do to get out of feeling so disappointed in the way my life has turned out. So that's why it first starts off with this social chameleon mask because I feel like Jane's like, like an extrovert. So I think that they care more about the if interpersonal connections first and then they'll prioritize their career. But what Jane doesn't realize, the social mask Jane currently has is attracting everyone else and it's not attracting quality Jane could attract quality of people. Imagine if 12 people go up to Jane. Why would a quality person walking by want to go up to Jane and be a part of that crowd? Because a quality person's like, mm, like I prefer one-on-one -on -one interactions or maybe whenever Jane's free, but they never see Jane free. You know, you need to tweak your mask, honestly, to tailor towards like, I was going to say like the upper echelon, just the more quality types of people you want to attract. I don't want it to see my classist. Look, if you want to hang out with a rich crowd, if you want to be a rich person yourself, you have to make connections. And the only way to make connections is by fitting in with the attire, fitting in with your diction, with your attitude, with your consistency. And I just feel like maybe Jane is starting to evolve, change their social mask 
to tailor towards these kinds of people so that way they don't attract a bunch of other low vibing people now i said upper echelon it could just be high vibing people but i'm kidding specifically with the king of pentacles like rich so whatever resonates for jane so these the right sections over here are going to be representing spirit so spirit is coming up as the emperor and justice and jane has been coming up with all of these so with the queen of cups the ten of cups and the empress now what jane does not see coming are these surprises that are going to come to jane and these are multiple surprises but these are like really amazing surprises and this aligns with the king of pentacles because jane's plan kind of was just i'm going to go into hermit mode self-reflect and evaluate who do i want to be how do i want to come across you know they're really working on negative toxic behavioral patterns negative thought processes stuff like that they're really doing their shadow work they're really working on themselves and they're isolating themselves but they don't realize how soon these surprises are going to come because they thought well once i'm ready to get out of hermit mode then i'm ready to receive the gifts of the universe and he does not realize that during this hermit mode time of self-reflection of self-analyzing they're going to meet a romantic interest like at the grocery store they're going to feel the urge to apply for a raffle that for like a thousand bucks and then they're gonna win it jane is super aligned with spirit they're just like a like a wonking intuitive being so that's why they're attracting these surprises but it's kind of getting jane off kilter because it's like well am i ready for this do i deserve this and that's why with the emperor the spirits around jane you know even god knows that jane has a tendency to self-sabotage so it's best to present these surprises suddenly if jane has time to think about whether i should accept this surprise or not they're just gonna fuck it up and oh remember with the five of swords i was getting not to fuck it up if anything because you're so focused on oh sorry uh not you yeah it's jane Jane's so focused on working on herself. Spirit has been connecting less with Jane. It's just something where time period where they are not in contact or purposefully not contacting Jane at all. But at the same time, Jane is like, why don't I care? Like, I'll just focus on that later because we're not I really, really need to focus on myself, which is great. Just everything's working out in divine timing. That's my point. How funny these two match with the Pisces symbolism. So I think it's really emphasizing like the water in Jane's chart. But with the Ten of Cups, as Jane goes on this healing journey with her social mask, even her boundaries and stuff that she has with people, any interpersonal things, the more gifts and blessing Jane is going to receive. And Jane's going to see as a sign or synchronicity that she's on the right path, which is true. And with the justice, each and every time Jane ends up receiving a gift and takes it jane is spiritually balancing her feminine and her masculine side and i think this is the point with the song the reason why jane was experiencing chronic dissatisfaction with her life in all aspects of life besides spirituality i think was because they had a warped masculine or feminine side i don't know which one but through this process Jane is healing it, but Jane didn't know the issue was the unhealed masculine or feminine side, but it was it's a great thing that Jane didn't know because Jane would have fucked it up. Because Jane overthinks, because Jane overplans, Jane overanalyzes. <laughs> so neat. so there's Jane with the Empress card. This is in full culmination. I don't know if I mentioned that with Ten of Cups, full culmination once. They've gathered all the surprises that the universe has sent. And once Jane has fully tweaked her mask, her social mask, and her, her boundaries, whatever interpersonal issues that she was having with others, she is going to receive a divine calling in her career. And she's going to amass, I got goosebumps, so much wealth in her life from here on out, in her finances. It's insane. But it's because... The ultimate surprise here at the end, when she was done healing 
Wow, I'm getting even more goosebumps. It's like I'm in my salmon party. The ultimate surprise was that she was going to always be abundant and rich because with the Eight of Cups, it's just showing in the physical reality how beautiful and abundant Jane was always in spirit. In the physical reality, Jane is meant to be super freaking successful in her career and amass a lot of wealth from it. And from here on out, whenever people see that in, in Jane's direction, but Jane and Spirit are the only people who knew that Jane has always deserved this. And Jane was, even though I'm physically wealthy right now, and I now will always be, I might surprise if you end up creating generational wealth in this state with the Empress. Even whenever I had 10 bucks in my bank account, I was still rich. You still loved Spirit. You loved yourself. You knew you were a blessing. I feel like you and Spirit were your only cheerleaders when it came to this financial career, to being physically abundant. I'm not surprised if you had many people who doubted you. Remember how I said something with computers or with social media? Maybe they can end up being like a superstar now. They could end up being very famous now. Something in the public eye, definitely. Everyone is forced to recognize Jane's title and respect it. But the thing is, Jane has always known that they deserve this respect since the beginning. Even whenever they they were thrifting, whenever they were eating ramen for lunch, breakfast, and dinner, even whenever they were working 9 to 5, they knew that they've always deserved this respect. It's about time they're getting it. And it's so funny I mentioned before that Jane, is, Jane was tweaking her image for the upper echelon. But at the end of the day, even though I said that, Jane is the upper echelon. Like Jane has always embodied that. It was a matter of, are you going to dumb down your vibration as in like, dumb down your social mask to accommodate everyone else? Or are you going to live in your honest and authentic truth? Act like you are the sh Act like you own this place. Act like you don't know it at all. Because you are. Because you do know it all. You deserve this wealth. We all know you, we, you deserve this wealth. I'm reading, sorry, I'm in Jane. Reading Jane's energy, tapping into Jane's energy, I know for a fact that Jane has always deserved to live in this honest divine truth with their social mask since they were little, but because of social conformity, because of societal expectations, and because of, of succumbing to the others around them, not, not, not wanting them to feel bad about themselves, Jane has dumbed her personality down to not make others feel bad. But now, over here, Jane's learning her lesson. This kind of reminds me of in Bleach. So there's an anime, and there's this guy called, called Kim, Kim, sorry, I'm sorry. There's this guy called Kimpachi in Bleach, and he is the damn near strongest freaking little warrior they have there, okay? And what happens is their spiritual pressure Everyone emanates in this whole society. His is like one of the strongest. It's insane. It's like monstrous. It's like really dangerous. And he wears clothing that's specifically designed to eat up his energy. If he didn't, then everyone else wouldn't be able to even talk with him or interact with him. That's like what you did. But Kenpachi goes off and sometimes takes it all off, you know, goes all out in the battles to not suppress his spiritual energy. But you never do. Now it's Jane's time to shine. Now it's Jane's time to fully unmask and reveal who she has always been. Because everyone else is going to be surprised. But it's no surprise to Jane that now now Jane's wealthy. Now Jane's this. Not a surprise that Jane had, had a premonition when she was younger. Or whenever she first started gaining psychic abilities. That she was going to attain wealth. But it was a matter of, of when and what. Because I'm not even surprised if Jane didn't even really know what to do with her career. And with the Three of Pentacles in reverse, the irony in all of this is that even though Jane is going to start, once the ending of the cycle happens and Jane's gonna, like I'm telling you, they're gonna receive so much money and abundance and wealth and a great reputation and stuff, Jane still has even more blessings to come. Even more surprises to come. That spirit still does not want Jane to self-sabotage, so they're not gonna pop until Jane about it. <laughs> 
So it feels like a repeated cycle all, all over again over here with the Five of Swords where they're always leaving Jane out or they're never telling Jane anything. They're always leaving Jane hanging. They are always give Jane an enigma, a puzzle that they can never solve. But all Jane really knows is the method to the madness is just by working on myself. And that's the only truth to it, really. Really interesting, really interesting to see your dynamic with spirit, too. You feel like a, like a loner. Definitely have a spirit guide. Our angels around you who are very, very hands-off. I don't know if that'll end up changing in the future, though, once you start maturing. Just By the way, I'm just going to mention this one thing. Uh, whenever I was young in my spiritual journey, for years, I could not physically see my spirit guides or interact with them. But I knew it was because I wasn't strong enough and I was too immature and it just within time it would happen. And recently I've been able to uh, interact with them and talk. I have the blessing, you know, the privilege of doing that. But it just seems like you need a little bit more refining, more maturity, more life experience to be able to interact with if you have that issue where you can't really see your spirit guide. You don't really know who they are, but it's okay. It's okay. Time will tell. So that's all I have for you. Please like, dislike, home, subscribe. Hope you guys have a great day or night. Bye. Hello to those who chose in part five. What you're looking at right now was letting you know what surprise and or surprises are coming your way. You only got three cards. And I was thinking that the middle card, you have absolutely no idea about it. Like it's a secret to you. It generally is. Over here, I think it's five cards are going to let you know spirit's advice on how to deal with the surprise or surprises that are coming your way. I'm not going to lie, y'all. Um, really channeling a lot of negative energy that's being attracted into your life with a temperance in reverse. I'm um, getting that you are attracting bad luck coming your way, sacrifices, avoidance, attachment issues. You know the saying, bad things happen to bad people. I'm so sorry, but I'm getting to say this in your reading. I'm so sorry. Now, just to analyze that saying and why it's coming up with a temperance in reverse, I think you have a lot of issues, a lot of things you've swept under the rug, a lot of subconscious things that are controlling your life that you have absolutely no idea about. You persist in negative thought patterns, negative behavioral patterns, toxic indulgences, treating others to toxically too. You just reiterate karmic cycles. To be honest, whenever you enter people's lives, they're supposed to learn a, a bad lesson from you, is what I'm getting. And if they don't, it's because they're vibing at your low vibration. Please continue listening to this, okay? But yeah, basically you have a lot of wounds that need to be healed, but you keep on putting band-aids on it because that's all you know how to deal with it. Because healing the actual wound is very, very painful and requires a lot of sacrifices out of yourself. But with what you don't see coming there is that's the death card and in, the, in its hand is the three of pentacles. What you don't see coming, which I think is your surprise, is the vibe I was getting with the temperature in reverse is not the exact same match uh, there with that death card. And what that means is the people around you that you love, your friends, your career, everything is stagnant and will remain the same there is going to be no surprises coming your way everything else in your life that you tolerate around you is of low vibration but to you it's not tolerating you're like what do you mean i, I love them i love this lifestyle i love let's say you go out and party every week doing drugs even like weed and i'm getting specifically a scenario of someone who is going to a psychiatrist claiming that they have a certain mental disorder, but it's just to get the pills. It's probably what you're doing too. And then there with the three of pentacles. To you, it's like everything works fine in my life. Everything goes together. There are so many people who have issues with people in my inner circle, including myself, but they're the problem. We're definitely not the problem. You definitely would not even see it coming that y'all are the problem. When I'm letting you know, y'all are literally all the problems. Y'all are walking bad karma that enter into people's lives and mess it up. It's what you do. 
you spoil a good thing. You don't know a good thing until you lose it. You're avoidant as hell. You don't have mastery over any of your, if you believe in chakras, your chakras. If you believe in chi, you don't have mastery over your chi. But that's how everyone is in your environment. So what do you expect? Anyone to challenge your notion, they're the toxic people. They're the ones that need to be kicked out. They're the ones that we need to ignore. When in reality, they're challenging you because they are seeing things from a higher perspective or because they just want a simple resolution. That'll also benefit them. But to you, you only care about anything benefiting you and yourself. I think you're horrible whenever it comes to arguments or resolving it, uh, issues with interpersonal issues with other people. With you, like you're fine yourself. Honestly, I think your career, if anything, your career is great. Good job. At least there's a compliment there. Or you the accolades that, that you've made, like good job. Like I'm really proud of you. But interpersonal wise, the inner work, the emotional maturity, the emotional intelligence you have is just so warped and skewed. It's so messed up. I'm not going to lie. And now we're just going to move on to over here and this is talking about what spirit's advice would be on how to best deal with this surprise which i told you you don't have any but how to best deal with your life i guess with the four pentacles in reverse the advice on how to handle i guess change your life man is to acknowledge what you've done all the good and the bad things and i think once you're really objective about it, which I'm getting specifically for you, to be honest, I don't think you're an immature person. I think that you're actually a very strong, bold, intelligent person. That's why I'm saying it's not going to be hard for you to really rationalize and think objectively. Okay, well, who have I done wrong? Even though you think you've done no one wrong, you know, it's just like, who have people think that I've done wrong? And from there, you can start off from there because you did do them wrong. You're just being stubborn. Uh, with four pentacles in reverse, it's you realizing that you have given a lot more bad than good to others. And then from there, the logical reasoning with you is with this six of uh, swords over here, you start saying to yourself, well, clearly, do I have this specific pattern of behavior with this kind of person? You remind me of my mom, let's say. So I'm protecting my mommy wounds. So let me heal my mommy wounds. But that's a lot of work. And that's where you're coming from, which it makes sense because you're stuck in stagnant. You don't really want to work on yourself. You don't want to do any type of self-reflection at all. I'm getting like a 30% chance you will actually go forward and actually try to heal yourself. But I could definitely picture you stopping midway and going back. You will have a more of a tendency to stay stuck in stagnant. And with this card, I forgot kind of what card this is. Maybe it's a strength card. But basically what spirit is, their advice to you is this sentence. Look in the ugly Mary motherfucker and realize that you're making it ugly. <laughs> Which is so rude. It's so rude. Maybe they're saying that because you're very vain. For an example, I've met such beautiful, gorgeous people in my life, like in person. They're so beautiful and stunning. But whenever I decide to consciously tap into their spiritual energy, see where they're at they literally smell like garbage like i'm not like it's disgusting they're spirit and it's because they're an ugly person inside and that's who you are you're ugly inside not out though you have the perfect image on the outside and with the six of pentacles on top spirits challenging you to challenge your preconceived notions about yourself you're already internalized programming you have had from society from the expectations that you put on yourself, that others put on yourself. Remove all of that, remove all of that, which can really help with meditation, with doing this, by the way. And think, what is a good person? Do I consider a moral person a good person, or do I consider someone who is truly themselves a good person? Would a good person do what bad thing you've done to someone else? And I think it's not that hard for you to be objective and for you to realize that it's a no. And from there, you can slowly start working on yourself. But to be honest, I think it's a 25% chance that whoever's going to be clicking on this pile that you are going to go through with this. But I have a lot of hope. Let's just stay very hopeful. And I hope you're able to do this inner work on yourself. I'm sorry this was a negative reading, but I have to be honest with you. 
yeah so please like dislike home subscribe hope you guys have a good day or night bye hello to those who've chosen pal six i got three songs for y'all y'all got the lyrics to them so you got the lyrics to working out by jid lust by kendrick lamar and i'm sorry by joiner lucas Honestly, over here, I'm getting the song Wake Up by Travis Scott and The Weeknd. And I'm just like dancing to it. want to sing to it. And I don't know why I'm getting I would just love to get to know someone while this is playing in the background. Pile 6, your carefree attitude. It could even be a new found carefree attitude. Maybe this is why it's now starting up. This manifestation is helping you manifest the things you want in this reality. So I'm saying, I don't know your personality. I don't know if maybe recently you have been trying to transition yourself to try to relax, to try to do more self-love, be less stubborn, to have less of a stick up your ass whenever other people interpret your energy. Because look, I mean, you have two, two ten of... 10 of swords, 10 of, 10 of wands, like you have to 10 cards. Maybe you've been really going through it. Just want to chill out, you know, relax. If you have a backyard or just sit out in nature, just chill with someone, just vibe with someone. I think this yearning to vibe with someone has came from a period of self-reflection, just analyzing everything about your life, all aspects of life. You trying to discern your energy, not so much about you trying to discern other people. You are acting in accordance to what you want. If you are ready enough to be able to handle what you want, so to be able to handle a specific career opportunity you want, a specific person, a specific pet, if you want, if you want a pet, if you want a specific house. So this self-reflection has led you to... Start yearning for authentic connections that you feel like you lack in your life or yearning for a partnership like love. You're definitely single. I'm so surprised if you're taken. If you're taken, I'm not surprised if you vibe more towards polygamy. I don't know. It's on the brink end with y'all. Like y'all are not compatible. Anyways, it just seems you just yearning, you know, looking out at the stars and just dreaming, wishing, hoping, and just really yearning for the proper companions that will suit you in this life journey forever. You don't want these people who are in and out. You want someone who will stick with it, you know, stick with you through thick and thin. So I don't know if you're yearning for friends. In that case, they are coming because of the carefree attitude you're having. Or if you're yearning for a partnership, then that is that is definitely coming up. Very as soon as it's fast, like it'll slap you in the face before you know it. I don't know why you keep on getting to be aggressive. So the group that you're attracting or a person that you're attracting is currently in a dissatisfied, somewhat of a dysfunctional state. And I think it's because they're not satisfied with their surroundings. They don't like who they are. They don't really, not surprised they don't even know who they are. Or if they're surrounded by others who don't know who they are and it's like, when am I going to find people or someone on my level? Dissatisfaction and honesty, I think it's coming from like a selfish place as in they feel like they deserve better. They're tired of settling. There you go. Like they want something to happen to jolt them back to life for them to start being passionate or interested in someone in partnerships or in platonically friendships. And I'm getting the specific line from I'm Sorry by Joyner Lucas. I wish I can hear you now. Is your soul missing? I wonder if you could do it again. Would you do it different? But it's so weird. It's like your soul tribe or your soulmate is talking to you in the spiritual. I think you already know this person's coming in or these people are coming in. You know, you can feel it in every fiber of your being. And I think that's why you're yearning. You're yearning for them. You're yearning to find the one, you're yearning to find your soul tribe, and you're ready for it, and you want it now, and you are going to get it now. But I think they 
are not as spiritually evolved and aware as you. Your soul is telling you this. The I can hear you now. Is your soul missing? I wonder if you could do it again. Would you do it different? So they're talking with your soul, making sure that everything's fine-tuned, everything is prepped. Every little freaking detail is ready. And that's exactly what you're doing, too. I think you're ready. Wow. You're ready for them to come into your life. But they're not ready for you. I'm just being honest. They're in an energy where they probably won't even be able to stand you. What I mean by that is they can't take what they dish out. Even though they want to have an elevated person or elevated people around them, I don't think they can handle that. They can't handle someone like them because they start butting heads with them. Whoever's coming into your life or people who come into your life, they like to bicker and fight with people that they love. I guess that's their way of showing love is by just being picky and nitpicking. That's their way of saying I love you, I guess. Maybe this person just has a lot more healing to do, but that was it. So now I'm going to go into the cards. So up here is the Ten of Wands, right? And when I put down the King of Cups, I was getting that the King of Cups is looking at the Ten of Swords, but can do nothing about it, can't even move toward, do nothing. It's just simply observing and watching. The King of Cups is being suppressed and held down from leaving or escaping towards the Ten of Swords. Now, remember what I told you. The person or people you are attracting are not in a good energy. I told you already. So they're with the Ten of You see how I'm getting a headache, man? I'm already rubbing my face. With the Ten of Swords, that's them. And you're looking at them, but you can't move towards them. So you're just watching and silently observing, hoping for them to come towards you. Do the Ten of Swords too? I think you understand that this person really is an emotional mess. Like, imagine finding a stray cat that is on nerve, on edge, because they've just been through that street life and you're trying your best to nurse them back to health and be a little home cat and they're struggling with like affection they're struggling with warming up to you that's what this feels like with this person and how you're seeing them that you just want to love them and nurture them and cuddle them and coddle them just give them a little kiss on the forehead and just be like oh like it's okay i can just cuddle all these ten of swords away you know which honestly i think you can especially when you're coming up with the king cups but it's just not divine timing right now. It's not the right time, dude, to go on ahead and just start doing that, okay? I, I assume something has to happen. So now, okay, look, we're going to get into over here. So this is the Seven of Pentacles, and this is the Six of Pentacles. So what surprise is coming your way? The Knight of Pentacles what you don't see coming is, I think, from the spiritual you've been observing this person or this group of people. I would like to reiterate, if it's a group of people, I understand why they're all vibing in the same energy. Because once you meet your soul tribe, I assume that you start vibing like them too. Y'all go, whenever y'all are having lows, all of y'all are having lows. Whenever y'all are having ups, all of you are having ups, you know? Like y'all are vibrationally aligned. With the Knight of Pentacles... That's your physical reality. So in the spiritual, you're observing them, always wondering about them, checking up on them. One random day, you're going to see this person in your physical reality. Even if you don't recognize them, it's okay. They're going to literally go up to you. I was going to say start finessing you. Maybe this person will try to flirt with you, try to give you an offer, ask for your number. If this is a group of people, they're all just going to be sitting at a table and then they're going to glance at you and be like, Hey, you, can, can you come over here? We want to ask you a few questions. This bold, that's my point. Passionate, boom, in place. The perfect puzzle piece that needs to fit for the puzzle. As in, this is divine timing. Even though this person is pretty going through it. With the Nine of Pentacles, this person still was in line and definitely in tune with spirit. Just like you. And you know that you both are as powerful or as vibrationally aligned as each other, you know? Which I think you're actually a very, very evolved soul so once this happens with the six of pentacles you're just like yes this is exactly how it's been planned i'm not surprised if you kind of got access to the akashic records and found out specific dates and times or a timeline of what was going to play out with your connection with this person or with these people because of your either psychic gifts or you 
asked another psychic to tell you, or just whatever other spiritual means, but you found this out and everything is perfectly in line. It's so gorgeous. You're so happy. You're so satisfied each and every step of the way with this person. Even the trials and tribulations you have with these people or this person, oh, it's still chef's kiss. Because you love them. Because you love them. You've been loving them spiritually. You were already in love with this person even before they entered your life. How gorgeous is that? This is so gorgeous, so beautiful. And now, with this person linked with the Ten of Swords, there is the Seven of Pentacles over next to the Six of Pentacles. And that's talking about the surprise for your person or for your people. They're surprised that how long y'all's connection lasts because this is going to last the test of time. Y'all are always going to be in each other's lives for marriage or for friendship. I, I don't really care because this is just such a divinely guided connection with this person. They're surprised how much y'all get along. They're surprised how happy and aligned they feel whenever they're just in your presence in the same room as you. Your personality, being your aura is so infectious. They can't get enough of you. Every single day, it's like they're learning something new about you and they can't get enough. They love you. And what's funny is like this person found you. They are probably not going to realize for a while that they were always in love with you, even from the start. It was love at first sight, but they didn't even know it. Like how I told you, this person probably has more healing to do or the more immature, I don't know, something like that, but are they less spiritually aware as time goes on, as they're more mature, as they're more spiritually aware, as they get more life experience, they're going to realize that if they were healed back then when they first met you, that it would have been love at first sight for them. Like probably how it was for you, but at least now they see it in the future. In the future, it's going to be a while. They're never going to let you go. They have like the utmost trust in you. If you told them that if you're going to jump off this skyscraper with me and I promise we're going to go into the afterlife together and all this stuff, are you really ready to like let go of... Sorry, that's a horrible example because I don't want y'all to do that. Please don't in your lives. Just my point is they would do the most craziest things for you. They will go above and beyond for you. And you'll definitely see this the longer this goes. But you need to be patient with them, you know? To be able to show this side, this love that they have for you. But I know you will. The King of Cups, you're able to have this much restraint on yourself to be patient enough to wait for this to come in. You'll have enough patience for them because at least they're even in your physical reality, you know? And you're just grateful for that. God, you both love each other so freaking much. This is so gorgeous. This is like the love of a lifetime. Anyways, now I have cards for you that are going to let you know spirits advice for you on how to deal with whoever this person or these people are that are going to be coming to your life. I feel like there's a common sense, but with the four of cups in reverse, it's saying to get to know them better. But I feel like naturally your energy feels like you only uplift the people around you if they're not happy or if they're in a bad mood or if they're being stubborn. You're very nestia. Like you're freaking annoying. <laughs> like you'll constantly be checking up on them. You'll constantly be pushing them, push it, push it, push it, I'll push it, push it, push you until you tell me what's wrong. Oh, yeah, like little sister vibes, yeah person that you are is just a perfect match for this person so seamlessly even probably down to like the life events y'all have had probably aligned so much it's insane the, the synchronicities y'all experience with one another too and then spirits advice for you with the seven of cups too is on how to deal with them and the surprise honestly i'm getting like masculine vibes from you or you're just the one that's like wearing the freaking pants in this connection like you're the one taking charge you're the one giving orders not necessarily to them in general like you're like a leader your job is to protect them whoever this person or people are your job is to stand up for them whenever they need guidance they're not going to ask for it until you know they're freaking stubborn you give them guidance even whenever they're grumpy and they're like no i don't need it even if they 
coming off like if they're not listening, they are. And then they're going to take it naturally. You know how to deal with this person. That was it. But I think they're coming out in reverse because it's low-key unnecessary advice. Because you're naturally going to do these things because it's just who you are. So yeah, that was all I had for you. I'm so happy for you, Paul Six. So happy for you, really. I hope you have a great day or night. Please like, dislike, comment, subscribe. Bye.